Okay, let's talk about the new MacBook Air. So earlier this month, we had the March Apple event, and despite the large number of leaks suggesting an M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, we didn't actually get one. Instead, we got an entirely new Mac, the Mac Studio, alongside the Studio Display. And thanks to this, I am very certain that I have a near 100% accurate picture as to how the new MacBook Air will be like, from its looks, to its features, to its price, to even its release dates. And the first thing that I want to address here is the design. If you've been following our videos, or even just app leaks in general, you're probably aware that its new MacBook Air would come in multiple colors. Not just silver, space gray, and gold, but a wide range of colors that would pretty much match the iMac colors. The first person to leak this was John Prosser, who's had some accurate design leaks in the past, and he showed us a render of this new MacBook Air based on some images that he had seen. We've also had multiple mentions from other leakers that this new Air would come in multiple colors, but only John's showed us a visual representation of how this might look like. And from these images, it looks almost identical to the 13-inch MacBook Pro, just without that underside portion. However, while I do think that some elements of the sleek are correct, I also think that some are not. So we modeled and rendered our very own zone of the concept as to how we think this new MacBook Air would look like. And the first thing that you'll probably notice in our concept as opposed to John's is that our version actually resembles the 14-inch MacBook Pro quite a lot with that rounded body. That's because I believe that Apple will have a consistent design style across their entire MacBook lineup, as that is exactly what they had before with the previous MacBook Pro and MacBook Air designs. So when Apple releases this new MacBook Air, it would make a lot of sense for it to take some heavy inspiration from the new MacBook Pros. Now, some of you might think that our Air concept looks super thick. It's actually not as thick as it looks. We modeled it with a thickness of just over one centimeter. The 14-inch MacBook Pro, for example, is 1.55. One centimeter was pretty much the minimum we could go with in order to fit all the ports and then also give the body that same rounded shape that the MacBook Pros have. In fact, this actually makes it noticeably thinner than the thickest part of the current MacBook Air, which is at 1.61 centimeters. And sure, I would still love for Apple to keep that wet shape design, but if they are to have a consistent look across all of their MacBook line, they'll need to have a design like this. We gave the display the same 13.3 inch size as on the current Air, as I think it makes a lot of sense for the Air to remain Apple's most compact laptop with a 16-inch Pro being the largest, uh, and the 14-inch Pro being right in the middle. We also gave the display a notch, as this too would unify the lineup. John Prosser also reported on this coming. It doesn't look great, especially on the smaller display, but at least the bezels would be just as thin as on the MacBook Pro. Now, because Apple usually keeps the same keyboard size across all MacBook models, and because the Air has a smaller 13.3-inch display, uh, we had to reduce the size of the trackpad. Based on our measurements, Apple would still be able to retain the same width, but they would have to make it shorter, just slightly, in order to be able to fit that larger keyboard with full-sized function keys, uh, which on the current Air, those are only half-sized. Another change that we made was in terms of the keyboard background. On the new MacBook Pros, this is black as it matches with the color of the keys. In John's leak, the background was white, matching the white keys and the white bezels. However, we actually went for a different approach here by giving it the same color as the chin, which has a lighter shade compared to the rest of the chassis. Essentially, we applied the same logic as on the new iMacs, where the front has this lighter look and the back has this darker look. Also, the iMax keyboard does indeed have a colored background that perfectly matches the chin which is exactly what we've done here. We've also relocated the speaker from the side to the top. Uh, this was because there just wasn't a lot of room on the sides, plus having them above the keyboard does resemble the old 12-inch MacBook quite a lot. And I've theorized in some of our previous videos that Apple might just call this MacBook, essentially dropping the Air name, uh, and in this case, having the speakers above the keyboard would make even more sense. But you know what else would make more sense? You fixing any issues that you're having with your Mac, thanks to Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video. If you have an older Mac, or even if you have the brand new 14 and 16 inch models, and you wanna make sure that they stay fast, then Clean My Mac X is the all-in-one tool that can do that. With Clean My Mac X, you can optimize your Mac by deleting unnecessary cache files, re-indexing spotlights, repairing this permissions, completely removing every trace of an app, and so much more. I should also mention that the company behind Clean My Mac X, MacPaw, is a Ukrainian company based in Kiev, so yeah, it's definitely not an easy time for any of them and they've done a lot to support their team. They even built a full tool to make sure that they're all safe, and they're constantly donating to humanitarian efforts, so buying their products is also a means of supporting Ukraine.
check out Clean My Mac X by using the link below. And now back to the video, uh, let's quickly go through the color options of this new MacBook Air. We have purple, blue, red, orange, yellow, green, and white. And I gotta say, the green and the blue ones look super sleek, especially the green. I absolutely love that. But my favorite one here is actually the white. It looks very similar to the Razer Blade Studio, just one color for the entire laptop, super clean and super modern. This new Air would definitely be the most fun to use MacBook ever made, but there's so much more to it than just its looks. The front camera is most certainly getting an upgrade to 1080p, just like on the MacBook Pros. We're also said to be getting MagSafe, which just like on the iMac, would most likely match the color of your Air. A moment of silence for the Space Gray MacBook Pro. Now, one thing about MagSafe is that in my 14-inch MacBook Pro review, I stated that I would never use it as I already have a USB Type-C port. So when I travel, I would simply use a single USB Type-C cable to charge all of my devices. A moment of silence for the iPhone. But something that I hadn't realized at that point was that having MagSafe technically frees up one of your other USB-C ports, which means that on the Air, uh, that would still only have two USB-C ports, you could use both of those for external devices while still being able to charge your MacBook using that MagSafe port. I should also mention that the two USB Type-C ports would be Thunderbolt 4, which are said to be located on each side, as opposed to both on the left. Again, a super useful feature as now, you can connect your monitors or your chargers from the side that is the most convenient. What's really cool about Thunderbolt 4 is that now you have these even beefier Thunderbolt docks that can give you 18 extra ports. That is 36 extra ports, provided that you use both Thunderbolt ports. Something that can turn your MacBook Air into a proper workstation. Link in the description in case you're interested in such a dock. Speaking of a workstation, the performance, as you all know by now, is said to be bummed thanks to Apple's M2 chip. This has recently been reiterated by Mark Gurman, saying that the M2 would have 8 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores, with 9 for the bin version. And of course, dual external displays are also expected, uh, which was a major downside for a lot of people with the M1, including myself. All of this sounds awesome, but how much is it going to cost and when is it going to be released? Well, price-wise, it all depends on what Apple does with the current M1 MacBook Air and what it will be doing with that upcoming M2 MacBook Pro. We've heard plenty of rumors that this new M2 MacBook Pro would still have the same design as the M1 13-inch. And if this is true, then this new Air would be more expensive, given that it's a redesign, um, than the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, which it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Of course, if Apple keeps the M1 Air, then this would push the price of the M2 Air even more. Personally, I just don't see a MacBook Air costing more than a MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna predict that Apple will only have this new Air um, and then a redesigned M2 MacBook Pro for a higher price. $999 would be a dream for this new Air, but $1100 would be more realistic. And that is assuming that they don't keep the current Air and they do redesign that M2 MacBook Pro. And in terms of the release date, ming Chikuo is saying late Q2 or Q3. Uh, this would mean anytime between June and September. Um, I would put my money on June as that's when WWC is. And that's when it would make the most sense for Apple to launch the M2 chip. And of course, when the M2 chip launches, we would need a product to go along Inside it, which would most likely be the MacBook Air and that new Mac Mini, which we've covered in this video right here. Personally, I'm super excited for this new Air and I cannot wait for it. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Um, and definitely subscribe for videos on the Mac Studio and the Apple Display, which are coming very, very soon. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.